Welcome back to another FPL Trans Tips video for Game Week 12. I'll be highlighting 10 players to buy, hold, sell, and skip, and cover a lot of different key assets and all the injury updates that you need to know about. Some of them have been cleared up and they'll be covered in this video. If you haven't been enjoying it, smash the like button and subscribe if you're new. Our aim is to get this video to over 200 likes and to keep on pushing towards 22,000 subscribers. And what you see on screen is Draft Hound. I'll be referring to this fpl.team and also cover a lot more in tomorrow's team selection video and on saturday there'll be the deadline stream in the morning so be sure to tune in for those two videos and of course the reaction stream and more ucl fantasy and fpl content but without further ado let's jump straight into this video the first buy of this video is Anthony Gordon, and it's not because of the contentious goal he scored at the weekend. It's because at his price and below, I think he's the best midfielder in the game. I've talked about him extensively in the last couple of months. I think he's a great option. The only concern is the yellow cards. He's got six this season. He already missed the game because of suspension, but four goals and four assists for a 5.7 million midfielder, and his ownership is still quite low at 8.4%. And the long-term fixtures are very impressive. Even Chelsea and Man United, which are flagged as a number three in the fixture difficulty rating, I still think they're good fixtures for Newcastle at home. And he's got 54 FPL points so far, and over 90,000 managers have transferred him in. Cole Palmer might be the flavor of the month, and he's a fantastic option at 5.1 million, but I still prefer Gordon, especially from open play, where he's a constant threat, and the underlying numbers are also very impressive. An XG figure of 3.03 for a budget midfielder, and he's got four goals and four assists. I think Gordon is one of the best midfielders to buy ahead of Gaming 12. Things change very quickly in football. So last week, I was talking about skipping Lascelles, but I gave context to it. I was talking about the fact that Lascelles would play against Arsenal and then Botman could be back before Bournemouth. But shortly after I uploaded that video and recorded it, there was the news that Sven Botman has suffered a setback and that turned Lascelles from a skip into a buy because my reasoning behind the skip was that if Botman comes back by game week 12, which is when the fixtures really start to turn there for Newcastle, then there's no real point of buying Lascelles because he'll be benched from that point onwards but Newcastle have a bit of an injury crisis at the moment. Sven Botman is still out, and so long as he's out on the sidelines, Lascelles is one of the best defenders to buy, and he only costs 4 million. I bought him in at 3.9 million on the wild card. Haven't started him yet. He got nine points on my bench in game week 11, but now I'm more than happy to start him against Bournemouth away. He's owned by 4.3% of the game, three bonus points, which all came against Arsenal, and he's also kept three clean sheets. His XGI is 0.21 and 24 three FPL points overall in only a handful of games. So with the long-term fixtures, Newcastle's solid defence and Lascelles being so cheap, I think he's one of the easiest buys so long as Botman is out. The last buy of this video is Bakayo Saka. I always seem to cover him because in recent weeks, he's been constantly getting injured or picking up knocks and he's doubtful for the upcoming deadline. He is now currently flagged on FPL after a knock against Sevilla in a 2-0 win where Saka scored, assisted and got man of the match. He's got some fantastic long-term fixtures and Saka was a buy from the other day and I'm going to keep him as a buy following the updates provided by Arteta and what he said was, and I quote, it was just a kick and I was told by the physio on the radio that he wasn't happy to continue so he'll have some discomfort but hopefully I want to assume that he will be okay. So Arteta seems quite optimistic. You can't really fully trust him when it comes to injury updates but I think Saka will be fine for Burnley and if that's the case I think Saka is definitely a buy. You might want to hold off a little bit just in case we get another update around the Friday but ultimately I think Saka will be available for game week 12 and he's a great captaincy option against Burnley at home. The underlying numbers are fantastic. He's got an XGI figure of 6.93 but in the last three game weeks it's only around 0.3 and he's had just one shot in the Premier League but four goals five assists he's owned by over 50 percent of the game 66 FPL points and I think he's going to come into a league of his own over the coming week so I think Saka is a buy and if Arsenal can replicate that performance against Sevilla getting the ball quickly to wingers like Martinelli and Saka having them take on the opposing fullbacks I think Arsenal will get back to the best in the offensive line and also they need to rely on some key players coming back from injury. Game week 12 is full of injury doubts and James Madison is yet another one of these players and the latest update we got from Ange Postacoglu was just after the 4-1 defeat to Chelsea at home and I quote, 
He got a knock on the ankle. We were down one man already. It made sense to make a couple of changes at that point. So the injury doesn't seem serious. I think he'll be available and Spurs desperately need him. Van der Ven could be out. You've got Destiny Odoggi and Christian Romero both suspended with red cards and Spurs could be down to the bare bones. If Madison's also out, you'd probably fear the worst death for Spurs and Wolves would fancy their chances anyway. But I think Madison is a hold. He's been one of the best signings in the Premier League this season. Three goals, six assists, 31 key passes, 62 FPL points, and he's owned by 38% of the game. He's still at 8.1 million. And despite some tough fixtures coming up, like Aston Villa, Man City, and Newcastle, you could also back Madison to do well in those games, and especially in the easier ones like Wolves and West Ham. So for me, James Madison is a hold, but as with any injury doubt this week, I'd encourage you to wait until Friday for more injury updates. Despite being cleared from injury, scoring a brace in the Champions League midweek, there are some people selling Erling Haaland, and even when he was flagged, I was talking about Haaland being a hold, and that was going to be the whole premise of this segment. But now he's clear, there is no reason to sell him whatsoever. The fixtures don't look great over the next four, but even those tough games like Liverpool at home, Erling Haaland and Man City could find some joy against the high line of Jurgen Klopp. Of course, maybe the German will adapt and things can change and they'll try to be more defensively resolute against Manchester City. But Erling Haaland is definitely a hold. And for those that don't have Erling Haaland, you probably want to go about until game 16 when Erling Haaland Haaland faces Luton away and the fixtures are fantastic in the long term. The only doubt there is game week 18, that blank, but then he could have a double in game week 20 against Brentford and that could be triple captaincy material. So Erling Haaland is one of the simplest holds of the season. He was very disappointing in game week 11 coming off at halftime in a 6-1 victory against Bournemouth. But I still think Erling Haaland will make up for that. He already did for me in UCL Fantasy and changed my week there. He's got 11 goals, 2 assists in the Premier League. He's still owned by over 82% of the game. And he's had 19 big chances, with most of them coming away from home, which is quite surprising considering most of his big hauls last season came out the yet. He had 80 FPL points. He's only behind Mohamed Salah for me. Erling Haaland is definitely a hold, and if you don't have Erling Haaland, maybe go about him up until game 16. Matty Cash was flagged early in the week, but it's now been cleared. Unai Emery has said he's available to play in the Europa Conference League. So even if he's benched there, don't worry about it. He should be available for sure against Fulham at home in game week 12. And Cash's stats are very impressive. Two goals and one assist. Most of his returns coming against Burnley, of course. But the XG is 3.27 for a so-called defender in FPL. It's absolutely fantastic. He's playing in a really advanced position and that's why he's owned by 34% of the game and he's priced at 5.2 million. 43 FPL points so far, not too good to be honest, but I would keep him for the next three game weeks and sell him out of Man City and Arsenal at home coming up very soon. But up until game week 15, I think cash is a hold. And then from that point onwards, I would look to sell these Aston Villa assets. It's a shame with Martin Odegaard because I think in games like this against Burnley, he could be absolutely fantastic and there's still a chance of him featuring. But we got an update from Arteta after the game about Inketia and Odegaard, who are both doubts heading into game week 12. And he said they are racing against the clock to be fit. They tried their best to be here today with us. It wasn't possible. And we have another 48 hours before we play Burnley. We'll try again and see because we need players at this moment. So let's wait and see. If Odegaard is clear to play or we get some rumours or leaks that Odegaard is available, then I think Odegaard is a hold for Burnley at home. But he's had an injury problem in the last couple of months, actually, which could maybe suggest or provide an explanation why he's not been performing to his absolute best. And he obviously played against West Ham, came off the bench, looked really impressive in that game, even scored a consolation goal but then he came out with an injury against Newcastle and that was very frustrating for him but it all depends on the next injury updates if he's available for Burnley I think it's a definite hold because in games like that Odegaard could easily give you a double digit return possibly even 17 plus points as he did against Bournemouth earlier in the season However, with the information we have at our disposal up until now, I think Odegaard is a sell. He has been disappointing this season. Three goals, two assists. The XGI is 3.77, not too bad, but I think he's been very inconsistent, especially compared to last season. 48 FPL points. Once he comes back from injury, though, I think he will be a consideration, and I think Arsenal will go up a gear in their attack and things will start to improve, especially if other key players like Gabriel Jesus return from injury and stay fit. But it all depends on the next injury update. If he is available though, do not sell Odegaard and just wait for those injury updates. 
Before Newcastle's 2 0 defeat to Borussia Dortmund in the Champions League, we got an update by Eddie Howe on Dan Byrne, and he said, Unfortunately, Dan will be out for some time. It could be a couple of months. That is sort of a speculative answer. He landed on his spine. I think he has got a problem with the base of his spine. It is a big blow for us. He has been gigantic for us since he signed for a lot of different reasons. So not good there on Dan Byrne. It is unfortunate and he could be out until January. He's currently in my team and that could also change my transfer plans. Unfortunately, I was looking to make some moves in the goalkeeper position or even the midfield. And now I might have to prioritize the defense, especially with Simicast bench last week, Dan Byrne out injured and a few other concerns there. So check out my team selection video for more insight into what to do with all these assets as well. But Dan Byrne for me is a sell. He's owned by 10% of the game, but that will go down by the minute and he will go down to single digit ownership by the deadline. He's got zero bonus points this season, four clean sheets, an XGI of 1.22 and 37 FPL points. He had good long-term fixtures. I liked him at that price and below. And that double up of Burn and Lascelles was a good way of covering Newcastle defensively for those without Kieran Trippier. But it's a very simple one. Dan Byrne will be out for a couple of months and unfortunately, he's a sell. Following his 22-point haul in game week 11, Doku has been transferred in by 300,000 managers and we're only at Thursday. Just calm down a little bit. That's what I'm going to say with Doku. He's got a lot of talent. He's a very exciting winger. He takes the fullbacks on and he's a constant menace. And look, the upcoming fixtures might not look too good, but Man City could still do extremely well, score plenty of goals, and players like Doku could be key in unlocking those defences. But is he going to start all five of the next five games? No, I don't think so. Will he even start three? That is a big question mark and if. And a lot of people bought Doku in a new CL fantasy. And guess what? He was benched. And with Pep Guardiola, you can't really trust him unless it comes to Erling Haaland. Doku is priced at 6.6 .6 million. He's owned by 4.3% of the game. Two goals, five assists, 15 key passes and 43 FPL points. But I think that haul against Bournemouth massively inflates people's perception of him as an FPL asset. I think in the long term, in the years to come, Doku will be fantastic in FPL. But at this moment in time, considering the lack of minutes potentially, and also he's not going to be nailed by any stretch of the imagination, I think those are major put-offs. And I'd rather go for other midfielders. You've got Gerard Byrne for a little bit more, even Matoma. Players like Cole Palmer and Gordon, I think, will be more consistent than Doku. So ultimately, I think the Belgian is a skip. It's not often I'll say this about a player who just scored a hat-trick, but for me, Nicholas Jackson is a skip. He had so many chances in that game, and I've never heard, really, of a player scoring a hat-trick and still underperforming their XG. I think that's one really good thing about Jackson and Chelsea. They create a lot of chances and Jackson is getting into some really good positions, but his finishing has been woeful. That hat-trick, of course, does inflate the stats and it looks really good all of a sudden, but I would not buy him, especially with Man City next. Then it's Newcastle. I think games like Brighton, Man United and Everton look pretty good for Jackson, but I wouldn't trust him. And the only Chelsea asset I would consider right now is Cole Palmer, and that's because he's so cheap and I think he's performing like a 7 to 8 million midfielder in FPL. But Jackson has 4.4% ownership. He's at 6.8 million, 5 goals, 6 yellow cards, 13 big chances and 37 FPL points. The most impressive stat, of course, is the big chances. And his XG is also very impressive at 6.72, 26 shots inside the box and 30 shots overall. But I don't trust Nicholas Jackson, despite that hat-trick against Tottenham. And ultimately, he only scored, in my opinion, because Spurs went down to nine men. So that's it. We've covered 10 players today to buy, hold, sell, and skip. Let me know if you disagree with any of the selections. Maybe Doku, he could finally become a great FPL option, and maybe I'm wrong about it. Let's wait and see, of course. Is Saka going to be available? I think he will be, and thus he is a buy in this video. And let's keep an eye out for other injury updates like James Madison, Martin Odegaard, and many others, because Gaming 12 looks like absolute chaos at the moment. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it or found it useful, then be sure to smash the like button and subscribe for you. Let's try to get this video to the 200 likes. Let's keep on pushing towards 22,000 subscribers and beyond. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, Dylan RCM, and check all the links in the description below for the Patreon, Championships Discord server, and the FPL League. As a channel member or patron, you can get early access to my videos and also all my team reveals as soon as I make the transfers or activate the chips. I wish you all the best of luck for Game Week 12 and the rest of the season, and I'll see you next time.